Okay, let's see. That's enough housekeeping to start. I want to continue talking about slow healing wounds, non-healing wounds, wound healing, and their alter egos, degenerative disease and aging. As we said before, degenerative disease and the aging process has a lot of simil have a lot of similarities with wound healing. Degenerative disease can be thought of as a wound that doesn't regenerate. The aging process itself can be thought of as a slow healing wound or a non-healing wound or a, a, a some kind of breakdown in the body that is preventing the body or where the body's not regenerating as it should. Yesterday we addressed the relationship between the steroid precursor hormones DHEA and 7-keto DHEA. 7-keto DHEA, they're both available in health food stores, but 7-keto DHEA will help you avoid some of the side effects that are associated with DHEA. There's not a lot of side effects, but sometimes people may get some oily skin or some, some uh, breakouts on their back. Sometimes people will notice that their hair is thinning if they take too much DHEA. I recommend around 1 milligram to 5 milligrams, maybe up to 10 milligrams a day. You always want to skip a day here and there with your steroid hormones or even with your fatty fatty nutrients in general because the fatty nutrients are stored so it's okay to skip a day here and there and it's okay to skip a day on your DHEA and 7 keto DHEA for supplementing that way. Today I want to talk about, I want to continue talking about the wound healing, the whole wound healing process, the the, uh, the degenerative disease process. As I said they're, they're very similar. How come one of the most important aspects of, of, uh, of the healing process also be one of the most important aspects of the disease process? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Why? How is it that one of the most important aspects of healing can also be one of the most important aspects of the disease process? Well, as we said so many times on the bright side, there's a simplicity to the body. There's only a few things that the body can do. In a way, healing, uh, one of the aspects of healing is, is similar to one of the aspects of wound healing. That's building. Because there's not a lot of things that happen in the body. In terms of biology, it's really just building and breaking down, building and breaking down, build up and break down. This is why the healing process is akin to the disease process. Healing is, a, is, is a build up and the disease process is break down. They're both fundamental aspects of how the body goes about its business. The disease process is the breakdown process, is when the breakdown process supersedes the build-up process. And healing and health is when the build-up process supersedes the breakdown process. I call it in the red or in the black. You're either in the red or in the black. And the way healing and disease are two, uh, two sides of the same coin. They're heads and tails. It's the same coin. It's build-up slash breakdown or metabolism. The coin is called metabolism. The head side of the coin you could think of as anabolism or build up, and the tail side of the coin you could think of as catabolism or breakdown. In the red, in the black. It's the same coin, however. In terms of cells, which are really the crux of disease, all disease is cell disease, cells are either starved or suffocate, suffocated or toxic if you are dealing with net breakdown, if you're net in the red, if you're net catabolic, if you're net degenerating. Your cells are either starved or suffocated or toxic or a combination thereof. And folks, it's as simple as that. It's so, so simple. It's not complex when it comes to healing and health. It's complex maybe if you want to go into all the little molecular, uh, molecular chemical reactions and all the various molecules that are in a cell and all the different things that have to happen. Yeah, that's complicated. There's millions of, chemis millions of chemical reactions going on in a cell every second. Sure, that's complicated. But as far as health goes, and as far as healing goes, and as far as accessing the regenerative powers of the body, that's not complicated at all. That's not even a medical issue. That's not even a doctor issue. That's a personal issue. That's our personal issue, and it's our personal responsibility. If you're not feeling as well as you should, if your body's breaking down, if you're dealing with a degenerative disease, what you're dealing with is net, a body that's net in the red. You're dealing with net breakdown. And if you're dealing with net breakdown, you're dealing with a cell issue because all disease is cell disease. If you're dealing with a cell issue, you're dealing with toxicity, starvation, and suffocation. Toxicity meaning something's getting into the body that the body doesn't want to deal with or doesn't know how to deal with or is having a problem deal with, dealing with. Suffocation meaning lack of oxygen. And starvation meaning lack of the mighty 90 nutrients. That pretty much says it all. And that pretty much simplifies and sums up all of the mechanisms of degenerative disease, degenerative sickness, accelerated aging, etc. In order for wound healing or any healing to take place, 
Lots of things have to go right. One of the processes that's involved in healing and health is the secretion of stuff. This is what cells do. Say all disease is cell disease, but what we really mean is cells aren't doing their business. So what's a cell's business? It's to make stuff. That's a cell's business, is to make things, to secrete things, to squeeze things out. Just like those old Play-Doh machines. Remember those old Play-Doh machines where you put the Play-Doh on the top and you press down and the Play-Doh will come out in all kinds of different weird shapes like stars or, or cylinders or whatever kind of uh, a dye you put in front of that uh, machine. It's called extrusion. And this extrusion process that happens with a Play-Doh machine is pretty much how a cell works. Cells extrude things. Now certainly they're doing stuff internally as well, but but for the most part, when we have a degenerative disease, we got an extrusion problem. There's other things that could go wrong, certainly, but extrusion issues are a big, big problem when it comes to breakdown, when it comes to catabolism, when it comes to degenerative disease, especially the extrusion of connective tissue substances. The body is made up of 40 to 50 percent connective tissue, and this extrusion, this Play-Doh style extrusion is extremely important when it comes to connective tissue diseases, when it comes to the breakdown of the body and when it comes to accelerated aging. All right, hang tight. I'll finish this up when we come back from our break. We'll take your phone calls as well at the bottom of the hour. 855-660-4261 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. So continuing on with this idea of one of the most important functions of a cell is to secrete or extrude things. Certainly cells do lots of stuff, but one of the most important things they do is they extrude things. They secrete liquids or uh, um, oils in the skin, for example. Sebum is secreted. Uh, one of the most important aspects of cell secretion involves connective tissue, which is 40 to 50 percent of the body. The body's held in place by connective tissue. Connective tissue is almost like a jello mold. If you ever put fruit in a jello mold, you know how the fruit kind of sits in the jello mold and the jello mold holds the fruit in place. That's kind of like what the body is. In fact, jello itself is connective tissue. It's, it's bovine or cow connective tissue. That's basically how connective tissue works in the body. When we're aging, when we're breaking down, when we're degenerating, oftentimes it's because of an issue with the manufacturing of connective tissue. There's many disease states that are marked by this, by this symptomology. The extrusion of connective tissue just doesn't take place appropriately. Connective tissue is basically two substances. It's fibers and goo. And the combination of fibers and goo form a mold that the body's organs and glands and various uh, structures sit inside like fruit sits inside of jello. So the body's made up of 40%, 40 to 50% connective tissue, 40 to 50% fibers and goo. And the fibers and goo, the goo, by the way, is called polysaccharides. The fibers and goo, much of the goo anyway, is called polysaccharides. The fibers and goo are produced by fiber and goo cells. And when we have a connective tissue problem, we got a fiber and goo cell issue. Now, obviously, fibers and goo, uh, the cells aren't called fibers and goo cells. They're called fibroblasts. But basically, they're cells that make fibers and goo. And the fibroblasts are, are subject to lots of problems. Autoimmune issues can affect the fibroblasts. Suffocation can affect the fibroblasts. Toxicity and lack of nutrients can affect the fibroblasts. And if you have a problem with your fibroblasts, you're going to have a fiber and goo issue, which means you're going to have a connective tissue issue, a connective tissue problem. One of the things that can happen is fibroblasts can f go crazy, go haywire, and start secreting too much fiber and goo. That's called fibrosis. And fibroids and keloids are examples of too much fibers and goo being secreted out of fibroblast following sick fibroblasts. All diseases, cell disease, connective tissue issues are fiber making cell disease, and that means fiber making cells or fiber and goo making cells, fibroblasts technically called or suffocated, starved, or toxic. Autoimmunity is involved because it can attack, the immune system can attack these fibroblasts. So if you've got fibroids, uterine fibroids, for example, or, or if you've got uh, polyps, which are a type of fibroid, or can be a type of fibroid, if you've got keloid scarring, if you have any eye issues, very often eye issues can be caused by fibrosis in the eye. Cirrhosis of the liver is fibrosis, uh, fibrosis in the liver. Cirrhosis involves fiber formation, excessive fiber formation. There's lots of places where fibrosis can take place, and 
cause degenerative disease problems, can cause pain issues. We talked in the past about fibroids, and this is just a classic example of fiber-making cells going nuts. Scars and keloids, again, examples of excessive fiber production. Fiber stimulation, the growth of fibers, is a really tightly controlled process. There's this razor edge that the fibroblast lives on where you've got to produce just enough fibers, the fibroblast does, just enough fibers or not, or, or, and not too much fibers. Excessive fibers is a big, big problem, especially problematic in the eyes, which are a major site, no pun intended, of fibrosis. Most diseases of the eyes that cause some kind of blindness, including glaucoma and cataracts, macular degeneration, fuchsian dystrophy. Yesterday we talked, or a couple days ago, we talked about a guy who had something called gutate in the eyes. All of these have some relationship, at least, to excessive fiber formation in the eye. Fiber formation, as we said, becomes excessive when fibroblasts become defective. All diseases cell disease, fibrosis, and fiber formation is fibroblast disease. Fiber-making cells become defective when they're inflamed, which follows suffocation, starvation, and toxification. And this is why eye doctors will use anti-inflammatory eye drops, steroids, as their main treatment. That's all they can do is use steroids. Now, an intelligent, non-medical person, an intelligent non-doctor, will be asking, why are fiber-making cells defective? Not how do we shut down the process, not how do we suppress the inflammatory process, but why are fiber-making cells defective? And what you'll always find, all diseases cell disease, and what you'll always find is cells that are starved, lack of the mighty 90 essential nutrients, suffocated, lack of oxygen, or toxic, being attacked by the immune system, sugar, excess insulin, digestive toxins, bacterial gases from outgassing, uh, from the intestine, problems with estrogen metabolism, all these are elements of toxicity. And the take-home message here about all these causes of fibrosis, including glaucoma and macular degeneration and cirrhosis of the liver and uterine fibroids, all of these causes of fibrosis are, are, are elements, involve elements that we have control of. We control the process of fibrosis through the types of foods we eat or don't eat. The types of nutrients we take in or don't take in through proper oxygenation, through detoxification, and through digestive support. I gotta love, you gotta love how somebody goes to the doctor. We had talked to this guy yesterday, uh, we talked about this guy a couple days ago with the gutate in the eye, and he says, uh, the doctor says, oh, you've got ocular gutate, that's Latin for eye specs or eye spots. You've got to love how a guy goes to the doctor because he's having vision problems and he leaves with a prescription for steroid eye drops and a diagnosis of specks in his eye. The eye doctor says, oh, you've got specks in the eye. You've got, you got stuff in your eye. That's his diagnosis. Of course, they give it to you in Latin, ocular gutate, stuff in the eye. Great. Hope he didn't pay a lot of money for that diagnosis of stuff in his eye. That's how the medical model works, you guys. It's craziness. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 is our number. We're coming back with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. All right, I was hoping to get to uh, scleroderma, an interesting fiber disease that affects maybe one out of, uh, maybe 1% of the population or so. Probably affects more than that in terms of, uh, in terms of mild, mild fibrosis. Doctors like to designate names to things, and they'll always name something based on certain criteria. But you may have a, a subclinical versions of disease states that aren't bad enough to go to the doctor, bad enough to even notice anything, notice anything significant, but they're bad enough to uh, be, at least be the beginnings of the degenerative disease and the, and the, uh, the aging process. Scleroderma is no different than that. You can have subclinical versions of scleroderma. Scleroderma is an autoimmune disease disease where the fiber and goo making cells, the fibroblasts freak out and start secreting all kinds of fibers uh, in various parts of the body. In fact, anywhere where there's uh, fibroblasts, anywhere where there's connective tissue, you can have uh, scleroderma issues. We'll talk about scleroderma tomorrow as we continue talking about wound healing and wound healing's relationship to the disease process and to the aging process. So if you have scleroderma, you know anybody who has scleroderma, tune in tomorrow and we'll cover that first off on the bright side. Okay. Uh, 855-660-4261 is our phone number. Got a couple lines open for you. Let's go to San Antonio and welcome Ryan to the bright side. What's up, Ryan? How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. What's going on? Okay, Ryan's being shy or silent, so we'll put Ryan back. Ryan's not talking, so we'll put Ryan back on hold 
and then we'll go to Steve. Uh, I'm not sure where Steve's calling from. What's up, Steve? How you doing? Welcome to the bright side. Steve? Uh, I had three questions that Pa, if you have sure. time to address. Well, sure, One ahead. has to do with uh, the time challenger. Uh, Dr. Peterson has mentioned that. Uh, what uh, you think about that? Number two is Ebola, and three has to do with cows in Missouri. I think the cheese or something, some special cow uh, bread from Africa that you might Oh, have yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Jordan Rubin's cattle. Jordan Rubin, he's a cattle breeder. He, Jordan Rubin does all kinds of stuff. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, one of the best, one of the, one of my, one of my favorite resources for all things digestion, one of the best resources you can find for all things digestion. He actually breeds cattle now that produce a type of dairy that doesn't have the problematic protein or one of the problematic proteins that people react to when they have dairy, when they eat dairy. So uh, a lot of folks are uh, able to enjoy Jordan Rubin's dairy products, even if they have typically have dairy intolerances. Uh, so that's what you're talking about. He, he, uh, he lives in Missouri. His, his ranch is in Missouri, and his cattle farm is in Missouri as well. Uh, then the second thing you asked me about, what was the second question? I'll take uh, one, one had to do with Ebola. Okay, we, Ebola. Let me, to, let me talk about Ebola, and then we'll take, take okay. the other question. Uh, Ebola, obviously, is a nasty virus. The best way to protect yourself from any virus or any uh, bacteria is to build your immune system, keep it strong, not put anything in the body that burdens the immune system. And that means most especially sugar and processed foods. In fact, any foods you eat will burden the immune system to a certain extent. As soon as we eat spinach, as soon as we eat a tomato, as soon as we eat a salad... Even, you know, typically good foods, as soon as we have eggs, as soon as we have meat, it doesn't have to be crappy food. Our immune system is alerted that an enemy has entered into the body. So any food will put a burden on the immune system. But certainly McDonald's and crappy foods and Snickers bars and processed foods, etc., they're going to put a mega burden on the body, on the immune system. So anything you can do to relax or remove the burdens on the immune system and anything you do to support the immune system is going to help you with, that, with microbial attacks, and that includes viruses. So... The best way to protect yourself from Ebola, and by the way, fear suppresses the immune system. Let's be clear here. Fear is one of the worst things. In terms of your health, fear is one of the worst things you can interface with. It's just as bad as any Big Mac or, or Whopper or Betty Crocker cake mix. You know, any processed foods. Or, fear is to be, don't, and don't be afraid of fear either, by the way. That's a whole other issue. You know, how, how President Roosevelt said, the only fear we have to fear is fear itself. So don't be yeah. afraid of fear, but just don't interface with it. Anybody who's making you feel fear, if you leave a conversation or uh, an interaction with somebody and you feel scared, that's an interaction or, or a conversation that you want to avoid having. You don't want to be in fear, especially when it comes to your immune system. Fear will suppress the immune system. That's that, that's just a mild digression, but that's important to recognize. Uh, processed foods can do it. Lack of oxygen can do it. Same thing we talk about all the time. Lack of the mighty 90 nutrients can do it as well. In terms of specifically boosting the immune system, vitamin C, zinc, selenium, uh, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, magnesium, these are all very, very important for uh, building the immune system. Staying away from uh, environmental toxins is also important. Read Sherry Rogers' book, uh, Tired Not Toxic, Classic, classic book on detoxification. Uh, and of course, your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, including the uh, ultimate essential fatty acids, are important. The Z-Radical can help uh, build the immune system. That, those are the kind of strategies you want to protect yourself from Ebola. And then uh, the last thing you asked me, Do I don't know who Dr. Peterson is. I think Time Challenger is a, uh, you know, I don't really want to get into other, I just get into trouble when I talk about other people's products. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that, except to say that the Time Challenger supplement is not it's not part of the Mighty 90. There's some of the Mighty 90 nutrients, as, a, as I understand it. But, you know, more important to focus on the Mighty 90. Resveratrol is great. You know, carnitine is great. Uh, I talk about all of these things. You get smatterings of the B vitamins. Stick to the Mighty, in my opinion, my opinion only, uh, Mighty 90 essential nutrients, healthy star pack. If you want to throw other things in, uh, I would throw in the Z-radical and the ultimate enzymes. The, the magic formula is, you know, I, I just don't. I'd rather not say anything about it. So I'm going to pass on that on that oh, last okay. question. Okay. Anything uh, and these would help any kind of um, support for the mitochondria. You don't uh, need to support. That's the, that's where the nonsense comes in. Okay. The uh, mitochondria are supported by being non-toxic, keeping your body clean, by using the mighty 90 essential nutrients, and making sure you're oxygenating. To target the mitochondria, it's marketing. 
And I, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, I don't want to get in. That's just going to get me into trouble. You don't need to target your mitochondria. You need to target your cells. All right, you don't need to target the Golgi apparatus. You don't need to target the endoplasmic reticulum. You don't need to target the little substructures inside a cell. Let the yeah. cell do the work. You okay. target the cell. Okay. Yeah. I, and just one brief thing, the, uh, the Ebola, that, uh, just for knowledge, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, airborne. I mean, we would protect ourselves uh, uh, correctly, I guess. Uh, immune system. Wife. Building the immune system. Fighting the, def allowing the, uh, uh, building the body's defenses. That's the okay. best way to protect. Building the body's defenses by not putting the crap in the body and by making sure you're putting the good stuff in the body. Yeah, yeah. And don't go into fear ever, 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 right, ever. Right, 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 I agree. Okay, right. well, thanks very much. All right, thank you, Steve. God bless, buddy. Okay. All right, let's see if we got Ryan back. Are you there, Ryan? Yes, I am. Sorry, I couldn't unmute earlier. No worries. Um, no worries. What's, what's going on? So, um, hey, this is something that you've talked about a, a bunch, uh, hypertension, but let me just tell you real quick what uh, my wife was prescribed going in for knowing that she had hypertension and just finishing up a, a UTI, three different medications. Can tell you okay. You know what? We got to take a break. I apologize, Ryan, but we'll get you for we'll get you as soon as we come back because I'll answer I'll answer all your questions when we come back. Uh, let's see. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight five five six six zero forty two sixty one is our number. You are listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Let's uh, talking to Ryan in uh, San Antonio. Ryan, let's go quick because I want to. I want to get to as many calls here as I can. You had th uh, three medications, you're saying? Yeah, so went in for uh, high blood pressure and, you know, a little bit of stress, walked out with... Uh, three medications. Uh, Xanax, SSRI, and beta blockers. <laughs> right? Xanax, so, SSRIs, like, and what was the last one? Uh, beta blocker. Okay, beta blocker, poison the heart, dumb down the heart. Any Anybody who thinks that's an intelligent strategy, I want to hear from them. Any medical professional or non-medical professional who thinks it's an intelligent strategy to poison the heart to lower the blood pressure, I want to hear from them. Other, otherwise, I just cannot figure out what a medical professional who's taken the Hippocratic Oath, who swears to help people, where they, what, what is the logic, the intelligence to poisoning the heart to slow down the blood pressure, to reduce the blood pressure? It just baffles me. All right, I, I still, every time I hear about it, I know I, we studied beta blockers 30 years ago in pharmacy school. I didn't understand it then, and in the last 30 years, I still can't understand what the heck a doctor is thinking by dispensing a beta blocker that poisons the heart. Read it, Google it, beta blockers, poisoning the heart. Uh, that's number one. At least that's, that, that's working with the high blood pressure. The Xanax and the SSRIs, obviously uh, your doctor thinks that your, your wife is having some mental issues, and that's why her blood pressure is high. The Xanax will knock, you know, anti-anxiety, like a Valium. And then uh, the SSRI, the Prozac, uh, he must think she's depressed. So, uh, you know, what do you want me to say? It's idiotic, in my opinion. IMO, my opinion only, idiotic. You can tell that to the doctor, by the way. That's just my opinion. That's all I'm saying. You want to address hypertension non-toxic in a non-toxic way? Figure out what the emergency is. Hypertension, high blood pressure is a sign that the body is in emergency mode. So figure out what the emergency is, and it's not difficult. It's either a nutritional deficiency and from a physical perspective. It's either a nutritional deficiency, it's a problem with breathing, and, and slow, deep breathing is one of the fastest ways to naturally lower your blood pressure. It can also be toxicity that's entering into the body through foods or through something called endo, meaning inside, endotoxemia, which is basically gases that are being spewed into the bloodstream through the digestive tract by bacteria, good uh, bacteria that live in the intestine. So correct the digestive issue, uh, digestive issues. Use the Z-radical and the digestive enzymes and look to problem foods. She's got to have other things going on. Hypertension is a secondary health challenge. That means there's primary issues underneath. So she's probably got blood sugar problems, digestive problems, something along those lines. Uh, certainly, there's, certainly if she has stress in her life or emotional distress, the body doesn't know necessarily that the stress is coming from a real threat or a pretend threat or, an, or a perceived threat. So if she does have stress in her life, emotional distress, or she's thinking the wrong thoughts, and these, these are very important issues that we don't address all the time on the bright side, but they're very significant, folks. If you have emotional or mental issues, if you're thinking the wrong thoughts, if you have, you're feeling crappy feelings, that's going to show up physically, too, and those certainly need to be addressed, not with SSRIs and Xanax, but with cognitive therapy, but with using thoughts, with figuring out what the problems are from an emotional standpoint. Drugs are never the answer. Never, 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 never. 
never. They're only going to muck up the system. So work on the emotional emotion and mental strategies, and I'm not going to go into that, but from a physical pers perspective, deep breathing techniques, the Mighty 90, especially the B vitamins, which are your uh, energizing vitamins, also vitamin C, and magnesium for that matter, and then, uh, and then uh, making sure that she's staying away from digestive toxins, which include sugar, which is to the body, some uh, uh, perceived anyway by the body chemistry as a toxin. Focus on digestion, deep breathing techniques, mighty 90 nutrients, and of course staying away from sugar, and then using the emotional and mental strategies. And she doesn't need any of those drugs, IMO, my opinion. Okay? okay. Thank you so Appreciate much, it. Ryan. God bless, buddy. All right, let's go to Ron in Austin. Welcome to the Bright Side, Ron. How you doing? Oh, great. Uh, ben, I've got two questions. Number one, what is the, um, um, uh, what did you, you mentioned this before, I don't know what it is, um, but it's for constipation, you add some grains of something or other. Uh, flax seeds, flax seeds, grind up flax seeds, or you can use any seeds, but I like flax seeds, you get protein and vitamin E and omega-3s in flax seeds. Get yourself some organic golden flax seeds at the health food store and then grind them up fresh in a little $10 or $20 coffee grinder that you buy at Kmart and grind them up right. fresh and put them in water, put them in smoothies. I put mine in on salads and smoothies. Um, you can put them on yogurt, whatever you want. You can just make sure you have one or two tablespoons of fiber every day and it'll, it's a great, great, great strategy for long-term constipation. Most importantly though, if you're constipated, look to foods that are causing that constipation and then eliminate those. Drinking a lot of water can help and same with probiotics. Probiotics, water, and fiber. For emergencies, high doses of vitamin C and, and, and high doses of magnesium can clean you out in an emergency fashion, uh, but they, they may cause some cramping. Uh, so they only save those for emergencies. And regular colonics or even periodic colonics can also be helpful for long-term constipation. But most importantly, look to the foods that are causing the problem. I'm sorry, Ron. Go All ahead. All right. Second question is, is Tullamere's, T-E-L-E-M-O-R-S. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Did yes. you cover that at all? No, because it's silly. I don't cover that. It's telomeres are long tails that sit on, that's, that are involved in uh, DNA and how the DNA divides. Right. Uh, you know, let the cell do its business. It's like the other guy was asking me about uh, that product, and I don't like talking about people's products, but, you know, let the cell do its business. Most of us are so starved of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. Most of us are so uh, are toxic from the foods that we're eating and, and, yeah. uh, and messed up digestive systems. Most of us, our blood sugars are so far off whack, or out of whack. Uh, that there's so many other fish, bigger fish to fry. It's like having an elephant on your roof and having a mosquito buzzing around your head. If you've got an elephant on your roof, the last thing you're worried about is a mosquito or flying around your head. Let's take care of the elephant on the roof. That, get your mighty 90 essential nutrients, your essential fatty acids, and making sure you're not using digestive toxins, deep breathing on a regular basis. Uh, make sure you're stabilizing your blood sugar. Let the telomeres do their own. Let, the telomeres will take care of themselves once the cells are healthy. Focus on the cells, not the structures inside the cells. That's God's business. That's the divine forces business. That's the body's business. It's our business to feed the system with the mighty 90 essential nutrients, to breathe the system with deep breathing techniques, to blow off carbon dioxide, and to make sure we're keeping our blood sugar stable, and then of course using uh, mental and emotional and even spiritual strategies. Well, the telomeres will take care of themselves. That's my opinion. Okay? Thanks so much, Ron. God bless. Have a beautiful day, bro. All right, Mary in Michigan, what's cooking? Welcome to the Bright Side. All right, is that me? <laughs> That's you, Mary. How you doing? Okay, thank you. Uh, listen, my, my, this should be fairly quick. My husband got a severe cut on his wrist. He broke okay. a jar, Okay. and it landed on his wrist, and it went pretty deep, and it was right in the center of his wrist, and uh, we, we closed it with a couple of butterflies, But uh, huh? and he's got movement in all of his fingers. Good. But no nerve damage getting, or any no nerve damage. Well, I don't know. He's getting a sharp pain every once in a while that okay. goes up to the palm of his hand. I wondered what he should be taking. He should be doing the mighty ninety essential nutrients. Number one, same thing everybody else is doing. Mighty ninety right. essential. It's just the same. Like I was saying, it's just it, wound healing is part of uh, the the it, wound healing is part of the regenerative process. So you just want to do the same things that you do for anti aging, the same things that you do for good health. Mighty ninety essential nutrients. Number one, mm -hmm. uh, make sure there's uh, you're getting fifty milligrams grams of zinc, very important for healing. You might want to throw in 400 uh, international units of vitamin E, even 800 international units of vitamin E for a little bit. Uh, and then if he's got any blood sugar issues, make sure he's taking care of those. If his insulin is not, if his insulin response is not as sensitive as it should be, that'll slow
slow down the healing process. So make sure he's staying off of insulin spiking foods. Make sure he's getting enough protein. It's the most important of the wound healing or the most important of the regenerative nutrients, especially arginine. And also, you might want to consider taurine as well. You might want to get them on some hyaluronic acid supplements or the glucogel caps from Longevity, uh, which are similar. Uh, make sure he's drinking or uh, using bone soup. You can use that as well. Also, if you send an email with your address in a way that I can cut and paste, I've been sending folks out uh, my wound healing cream. It's made with omega-6s and vitamin C and cholesterol and a few other things. Uh, if you send me an email... Uh, to Ben at KSCR.com with your address. I'll send you out a couple of samples. Make sure you say Mary from Michigan and I'll send you out a double, uh, couple of samples of my wound healing cream and that might help as well. Also, last but not least, he may want to consider high doses of vitamin C, which are incredibly important for the wound healing process. And vitamin C works with the glucogel caps as well. And by high doses, I'm talking about in addition to the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which will get him 1,000 milligrams, maybe another 2,000 milligrams or so a day. Okay. okay, we've been taking the uh, liposomal C. Do you think that would be... I don't know if you're getting enough in there. Liposomes are good, but I don't know if they give you enough vitamin C. It just, you know how much you're getting? It's, it's usually like 100 or 200 milligrams of vitamin C. Oh, is that all? I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't okay. know what you're taking, but okay. usually it's a smaller dose uh, because you're paying for the liposome. So uh, ordinary vitamin C... I've been C. making it. I've been oh, you've been making, making your own. Oh, yeah. well then, oh, then that's great. If you're making your own vitamin, liposomal vitamin C, that's great. How do you know how to make it? Well, I was just on the YouTube and all that stuff. And so good for I, you. Good for you, Mary. That's you. awesome. All right, good. We got And you could put the liposomal vitamin C, by the way, right on the wound. That's another thing you could do. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I apologize if I left you on hold. That's why I say you got to call in early so we can get to all our calls. Uh, but if you call in tomorrow, tell our call screener that we left you on hold and we'll get you first up. If you're interested in learning more about the longevity products, the ones I take and the ones I recommend, or if you want to join me on, on, in my mission to educate the world about the importance of a nutritional supplement program, Go to brightsideben.com and click on the Join the Team link, and somebody will get back to you with more information. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, folks. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.